This is a fight that's been brewing for a while now, AMD versus Nvidia in the budget segment of the GPU market. What constitutes budget in 2025 is of course another discussion entirely, but regardless, the AMD 9060 XT and the Nvidia RTX 5060 represent each company's lowest priced offerings from this generation of card. One of these, however, is punching well above its weight class. After a long period of flux, the GPU market appears to be settling down at least a little bit in May and June of 2025. Although tariffs and other economic factors have certainly driven the cost of high-end offerings up into unobtainium territory, the mid-range and low end of the market actually appears to be in an okay place. Yes, comparatively, these products will still cost significantly more than historical data would suggest for similar classes of products. And my recommendation to many friends and family over the past year has been don't buy. But there comes a point where a lot of people are left with little other option than to bite the higher priced bullet if they don't feel like venturing into the used market. That's why I'm pretty happy to see both AMD and Nvidia releasing lower tiered graphics cards in the $300 range that, spoiler alert, both perform fairly well for 1080p and 1440p gaming. However, when it comes to comparing the new Nvidia RTX 5060 with its eight gigabytes of VRAM and the RX 9060 XT with its 16 gigabytes for only $50 more MSRP, this becomes an easy don't buy for one of them. And that's actually the main point of this video. I'm gonna show you performance data from a number of gaming tests for the RTX 5060, RTX 5070, RX 9060 XT and RX 9070 that honestly all look pretty decent. But the RX 9060 XT offers a level of future proofing that Nvidia just can't touch at this price point. The RTX 5060 MSRPs for $300 and I was able to pick up this Gigabyte WinForce model for $350. I would love to see more cards at the actual Nvidia MSRP, especially in this price class but a $50 price premium puts it directly in line with the RX 9060 XT 16 gigabytes that we'll be testing here, which MSRPs for that exact same $350, but provides double the frame buffer. Now, while this is a launch day video, and we don't yet know the extent of the availability of the 9060 XT and what kind of price premium we might see on these, all I can do right now is compare with the costs that we know. So despite the disparity in VRAM, this is currently like for like. So why all the fuss about memory? It comes down to compatibility with future software releases and the ability to run games at higher detail settings. With more modern games taking advantage of high detail texture packs, all of that data needs to go somewhere. If your GPU runs out of VRAM while trying to load textures and other scene details, you will have uneven, stuttery gameplay and significant overall performance loss. So let's jump right into the benchmark so as not to bury the lead. All of my testing for this video was done in an actual system with an actual enclosed side panel and not an open air bench. I've heard your complaints about testing more in real world scenarios, and I'm gonna try to incorporate that moving forward. To that end, I've also tested all of my games at high settings as opposed to ultra, both at 1080 and 1440. I've seen a lot of comments stating that a lot of people in this market segment aren't interested in maxing out every possible graphics slider as they are just trying to get an enjoyable experience for a low cost. First up, let's look at overall power draw. One advantage Nvidia has certainly had recently is that their mid to low end cards tend to be significantly more power efficient than those offered by AMD and that holds true here. I wouldn't consider any of these GPUs to be problematic for system builders though, as all of them could comfortably be used in a system with a power supply of 650 watts or so. We'll kick off our gaming benchmarks with a look at one of the most demanding titles out there, Black Myth Wukong. At 1080p, the 9060 XT ekes out a small 2 FPS advantage over the 5060. This isn't something that was noticeable in-game as they both broke 60, which is an important threshold. At 1440p, we had a dead heat here at 47 FPS on average for each. Certainly a slightly less enjoyable experience at this frame rate, and for this game, I think it's likely best to stick to 1080p. 
Cyberpunk 2077 is up next, and from here on out, you'll see that at both 1080p and 1440p, both the 5060 and 9060 XT will give very playable frame rates across the board. An 8 FPS win is on the books here for the 9060 XT, and this same margin carries over to 1440p, where the heavier textures lead to a more sizable advantage when it comes to percentage difference. 8 FPS at 1080p is a 6.5% win, while 8 FPS at 1440p is a 10.3% victory for the 9060 XT. Dirt 5 showcases higher frame rates across the board, and this one was honestly too close to call. At over 160 frames per second, a 2 FPS difference is negligible. As with Cyberpunk though, we saw the percentage difference expand as we moved to 1440p. Again, as far as actual FPS goes, a 6 FPS gap isn't huge, but this is a 4.7% margin, whereas at 1080p we were only looking at 1%. F124 however does give Nvidia some breathing room for the low end cards. While the RX 9070 pummeled the field in this test, the 9060 XT couldn't follow suit and the RTX 5060 claimed a huge margin of victory here. The same was true at 1440p, and although any game running at these high of a frame rate would be playable across the board, certainly, we still see the 5060 beating the 9060 XT by over 30 frames per second on average. Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered swung the pendulum back in the other direction, however, at both 1080p and 1440p. This is likely due to the detailed textures and expansive scenes that this game brings to the table. Although I didn't note any significant buffering or stuttering on the 5060 when running these tests, it makes sense that having to load and draw both detailed textures and wide and far fields of view would prove problematic for a GPU with half the VRAM. Guardians of the Galaxy was our last title tested, and I think this is the exact opposite of what we saw in Horizon Zero Dawn. This benchmark test actually focuses on closer shots walking through a market, as opposed to huge draw distances, and as a result, the difference in memory wasn't a factor. The 5060 XT won handily here at both resolutions. So overall, we have the 9060 XT winning four of six tests versus the RTX 5060, with the limitations of the 5060's configuration becoming apparent in titles like Cyberpunk and Horizon Zero Dawn. That's not to say the 5060 is bad. I actually was relatively impressed with its ability to keep up through most of the testing, and it does provide a decent generational uplift over the 4060. But if you have a buying decision to make and both the RTX 5060 and RX 9060 XT are sitting in front of you at the exact same price, I think the choice is honestly pretty clear. AMD's offering is just superior at this price point and it's kind of hard to argue otherwise. Thanks for watching the review video, guys. If you liked it, be sure to leave a comment down below letting me know how ruggedly handsome I am. Uh, or, or maybe just comment on the PC hardware or something. I, I don't know. Look, whatever you guys are feeling at the time. As always, I'll see you in the next video.